Tonight, an update on the woman from our last show, the one with stage four terminal cancer, cut off from life-saving treatment by Obamacare. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. And also, a computer hacker will join us with a dire warning. Healthcare.gov could already be compromised. But first, he did it again. President Obama, who knew for three years that Americans, even if they liked their health care plan, would not be able to keep it, continued to lie, saying that they could. And he just did it again. And although he claims he truly believed that Americans could keep their health care plans, he now admits he was inaccurate. So why was he inaccurate? Why can't we keep our health care plans if we like them? Why? Because Mr. Transparency himself changed the fine print and made believe he didn't know anything about it. Kind of reminds me of a used car salesman. We here at Creasel Used Cars aren't lying, we aren't kidding, we're telling the truth when we say we have used cars in A1 condition. He changed the rules so that we could not keep our health care plans. Shock, he lied again. He lied about that awful video in Benghazi. He lied about getting to the truth about the IRS. And he lied to us about what most of us consider sacred, our family's health. Now, how do I know this? I know it because his own Justice Department and legal papers filed in federal court admitted that most health plans would lose their grandfather status by the end of 2013. So, Mr. President, we finally know where you draw the line on lies. Lie to the American people? No problem. Lie to Congress? No problem. Lie to an oversight committee? Not a problem. But even you know not to lie to a federal judge in federal court. And mind you, it's not only the 5%, as you say, who have their own plans that you now admit will lose coverage, but all of us, including well over 100 million American workers who get coverage through their employers who will lose their grandfather protection status. Except, of course, you, Mr. President, your staff, Congress, their staff, and those union friends of yours. But you say that we should welcome the new mandate, that it will bring better health care and lower premiums to us. Now, how could that possibly be? There is no way that these plans can be cheaper. Why? Because they have to include stuff that we don't need. Now, I'm guessing if you're a senior citizen, you probably do not need pediatric dental care. False teeth, maybe, but not pediatric dental care. And I'm guessing that if you're a gay man, you probably don't need labor room and delivery benefits. And if you're a postmenopausal woman, I'm guessing you probably don't need maternity benefits. Maybe a few fans or air conditioners, but not maternity benefits. And the depths that you, Mr. President, went through to perpetuate this lie is only outdone by the ineptitude of your administration to even make good on your signature legislation. Now, what do I mean by that? How do you spend more than $600 million on a website that doesn't work? Why do you hire a Canadian company that even Canada fired with a French name that nobody can pronounce through a no-bid contract? Why would you even go out of the United States, the home of Amazon and Google, and hire a foreign company? And this week, we find out that your own FBI has been investigating one of your website contractors for fraud. The same contractor repeatedly written up in trade journals and exposés for lowballing bids to win contracts, only to have the final cost balloon exponentially. But I'll bet you're going to get to the bottom of this and you're going to hold people accountable. But why would I believe that since you permitted navigators with criminal convictions to gather our personal, private information to put on a website that doesn't work? Why would you do this? 
Why lie about something that you know will ultimately be exposed as blatantly untrue? Why lie about a video in Benghazi? Why lie about your IRS targeting your political opponents? Why? So that you, Mr. President, can win an election. This week, an ABC Washington Post poll found that had the health care lie been exposed before November 2012, Romney would have won the election 49% to 45%. And Benghazi? Of course, you had to say it was a video. If you admitted that you knew Al-Qaeda had killed four Americans, then I guess your Osama bin Laden narrative wouldn't have been so compelling. And if the IRS hadn't targeted your political enemies uh, during your election, which, by the way, was pretty close, we might also have had a completely different result. So now that you've been forced to admit the lie, even your own party is panicked. They are scared. The sycophants who touted your health care bill, including Senator Mary Landrow, Congressman Nick Rahal, they're jumping ship. What to do going forward? Now, yesterday you gave us an extra month next year to sign up for Obamacare. You say it's good news for consumers because we'll have more time to learn about the plans before enrolling. You know, my dad, rest in peace, always told me there are two reasons for doing things. A good reason and the real reason. The real reason? The one month would move the start of the 2015 enrollment and the inevitable increase in premiums to after the 2014 midterm elections. Now, isn't that special? Mr. President, with all due respect, you have done nothing but pull the wool over Americans' eyes in your relentless pursuit of power. Whether it was a nuclear option this week in the Senate or trying to convince the American public that we couldn't have saved those four Americans that we now know were begging for help in Benghazi. You came into office claiming you would give the American people the most transparent administration in history. That's one of the few things that maybe you didn't lie about. Except the transparency is about you. You are the one who's transparent. And Americans now see right through your lies. And with me now, conservative columnist and author of Never Trust a Liberal Over Three, Ann Coulter. Hi, Ann. Am I wrong? That was the most magnificent intro I have ever heard. I'm going to change it to the answering machine on, 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 on my cell phone. And when I turn on my computer, I want that to come up. <laughs> No, Talk you're completely me. right. And when you say, um, in addition to lying in order to win an election, one of the things, you know, the New York Times describes Obama's lies about how you can keep your health care. But when he was campaigning for Obamacare, he misspoke. No, it not only was a lie, it was an intentional, absolutely necessary lie, because even with the sleazy parliamentary maneuvers, Congress would not have been able to pass Obamacare without that lie, without Obama and the Democrats all repeating that lie over and over again. And you mentioned Mary Landrieu, um, the, the allegedly conservative Democrat senator from, from Louisiana. Louisiana. Right. Oh, yeah, a lot of Democrats are backing away from it now, but I'm sorry, they all voted for it. You talk about doing something just to win their reelection. But you know what, Ann, it's worse than that, because what we now know is that the Justice Department is, is, is offering papers that make it clear that they knew that we weren't going to yes. keep our health care plans. The Office of, uh, um, uh, the, I think it's control, is it budget control? Which, which office was it that said basically that uh, there's no way they can keep their health care plans? The Health and Human Services, uh, promulgated these regulations basically saying that you know they're not going to be able to keep it and 67 percent of Americans won't be able to keep it they knew all of this yes yes and yes there was an HHS report back in 2010 saying 194 million Americans will be thrown off their current health care plans right. because and now they have the audacity to say oh those were crap health care plans because they don't cover the things you just mentioned <laughs> maternity care for an elderly couple and 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 the gay guys because they totally need maternity <laughs> care um, no I mean this is this is this is it is serious and it would have been impeachable if it were any other president. Um, 
But I just, I'm so worried that these Democrats are going to worm their way out and convince their constituents, oh, but I'm trying to help now. You know I'm what, trying to Ian, give you a better plan. I, I, you know what I'm thinking now? I'm thinking for the first time that Americans are saying, hey, wait a minute, this is about my health now. You right. know, it's one thing for you to lie about politics, you know, whatever. Right. You know, but don't you lie to me about, you know, a possible decision regarding a mastectomy. Right. And, and if I'm an amputee, I mean, don't you think that Americans are, this is really going to affect 20 I hope so, and I hope Republicans don't blow it because if there was ever a time to reject the idea that there's no difference between the parties, remember America, not one Republican voted for Obamacare, not one Democrat right. voted against it. Right. And unless you change, I mean, you keep hearing people say, oh, Obamacare is going to fall on its own. Don't get in the way, Ted Cruz. Well, it, nothing falls on its own. Look at it. Look at public education in America. Half of public school graduates in New York can't read. Has that <laughs> fallen on its own? No, once liberals put something in place, it will go on and on and on unless you elect Republicans to repeal it. All right, Ann Coulter, always good to be with you. Thank you. And coming up, remember Maria Silva, the woman we met last show uh, who has been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Her medical coverage was dropped because of Obamacare. She's back with an update. You're not going to want to miss this one. And vote in tonight's Instapol. Would President Obama have been reelected if Americans knew they were going to lose their health care? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine.